Hi and welcome to section 4.3. This is the first of three videos for this section. So in this section, 4.3, we're going to be looking at derivatives and the shapes of graphs. So, specifically what this section is going to be doing is that if we're given some information about a derivative, first derivative, second derivative, etc., how can we use that information to tell something about what the graph of the function behind that derivative actually looks like? So, first off, recall that what? f prime of x, the derivative of the function, again, I know you've got to think back a few weeks, you've been overloaded with information, but when we have a derivative of a function, that gives us what? It gives us the slope of a line at that point. So if I take the derivative, if I plug in that value of x, that's what the slope of the line is at that point. So this gives us what's known as the increasing or decreasing test. And I have two options. If f prime of x is greater than 0, then f, the function, is increasing. And similarly, if f prime of x is less than 0, then f is decreasing. And the way we can look at it, let's look at our good old friend, the parabola. So if I take the derivative, the slope of the line at all of these points is what? Negative, negative, negative. It's running downhill. So the function is decreasing, it's coming down. Over here on the right side of zero, it's what? The slope of these lines is a positive value, so that means the function is increasing. So if I told you the derivative of a function at x equals 4 is equal to 12, you know what? That at that exact point, that graph is running uphill, it is increasing. So that's our increasing, decreasing test. So let's look at an example how we can use this information. I'm going to erase this so I have the whole board to work with here, kind of a lengthy example. So we want to find where the function f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 4x to the third minus 12x squared plus 5. So find where it is increasing and where it is decreasing. So, let's think back a second, kind of take a side note here, back to that parabola. So on the left, this thing is decreasing, right? And on the right, it's increasing. Well, when it changes from increasing to decrease, well, so in this case, from decreasing to increasing, what happens? We hit a critical number. Right? An absolute max or an absolute min. So if I have some function that looks like this, it's increasing until it hits a critical number, it's decreasing until it hits a critical number, and then it's increasing again. So to solve this kind of problem, if I'm given a function and I'm asked where is it increasing, where is it decreasing, I need to find the critical numbers and build a table using those values 
because I know at those critical values, it's either changing from increasing to decreasing. So let's figure out the derivative. So the derivative of this function is what? It's 12x to the third minus 12x squared minus 24x. So the critical numbers of this function is where this whole thing is equal to zero. It's also where it does not exist, but because we don't have a denominator, that's not a concern here. So the first thing I can do is what? I can divide everything by 12, I guess, or let, let's factor a 12x out. So I can factor a 12x out of this whole thing, and I get what? I get x squared minus x minus 2. So now I still need to factor this guy, because ultimately I'm trying to figure out what values of x will make this thing equal to 0. And this thing factors nicely into x minus 2, x plus 1. Yep. So by zero property rule, it means what? Either this is 0, and or this is 0, and or this is 0. So that means what? That means 12x is 0, x minus 2 is 0, x plus 1 is 0. So that means x is 0, that's one of my critical points. X is positive 2, another one. X is negative 1. So I might not know what this curve looks like, but I know at 0, it changes from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. And at 2, it changes. And at negative 1, it changes. So I'm going to build a table similar to like Math 126 when we were trying to solve inequalities. So I'm going to use these critical points on my table. So I have negative 1. I have 0, I have positive 2, and so of course I have infinity all the way down to negative infinity here. So then I want to know within this interval from negative 1 to, from negative infinity to negative 1, is this function increasing or decreasing? From negative 1 to 0, same. 0 to 2, same, up to infinity. So I need to know what's happening with each piece here. So 12x, x minus 2, x plus 1. So when I'm in the interval, negative infinity to negative 1, so let's just pick a number, negative 10. So if I plug negative 10 into this uh, these expressions for x, well, 12 times a negative number is going to give me a negative number. Negative 10 minus 2 is a negative number. Negative 10 plus 1 is a negative number. So remember, this whole derivative is a multiple, uh, I'm multiplying these three pieces. So negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. Meaning that the product of this whole thing so I'm multiplying down. Negative times negative times negative gives me a negative value. So that's telling me that from negative infinity until I hit negative 1, this function is decreasing. Now, if that's true, and if negative 1 is a critical point, this should be what? Positive, right? Because I know at the critical point it goes from decreasing to increasing. So let's check to make sure. So I need a number between negative 1 and 0. So let's pick negative half. So if I plug in negative half here, positive times negative is a negative. Negative half minus 2 is a negative. Negative half plus 1 is a positive number. So now multiply down. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive is positive. So that's good. That's what I wanted to see. Do the same thing for these other intervals. So something between 0 and 2, let's call it 1. Something between 2 to infinity, let's call it 5. And you can pick any number. It's just to test, do I get a positive or negative value? So 12 times 1, positive. 1 minus 2, negative. 1 plus 1, positive. So positive times negative is negative, 
negative times positive is negative. And again, that's what I want to see. This bottom row should be alternating plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, no matter how many intervals I have. And then lastly, for 5, 12 times 5 is a positive number. 5 minus 2, positive number. 5 plus 1, positive number. Positive times positive times positive is positive. So then that means, going back to what you're looking for, where is this increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative 1 to 0, but it's, we don't include those endpoints, right? So it's just on that open interval, because at negative 1, it's not increasing or decreasing, right? It's a, it's a horizontal line. So we don't include the endpoints. And it's also increasing from 2 up to infinity. Now, don't get stuck in the habit of, oh, I have to put a union sign in here. No, that's not what we're talking about anymore. We're just looking at specific intervals of this, of this function. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? We're not using unions here. So if you're in that habit of, oh, if I have two, two intervals next to each other, I need to put a union. It's not. It's just, it's basically a comma. From negative 1 to 0, it's increasing. From 2 to infinity, it's increasing. Just answering the question. And then decreasing negative infinity up to negative 1. And from 0 to 2. That is when this function is decreasing. So, I'm going to erase this. If you want to follow back on any of it, go ahead and hit pause. But this leads us, this idea of the derivative and is it increasing or de decreasing, it gives us a first derivative test. And for that, we have the following. Suppose C is a critical number of a continuous function f changes from positive to negative at that number C, then F has a local max. So think about it. F prime, so the slope changes from positive to negative, well, obviously, that means there has to be a maximum point there. And we're just going to call it local max. Maybe it's the absolute max, but it's most definitely a local max. And similarly, if f prime changes from negative to positive, at c, then f has a local min. So same idea, the slope was negative, we're going down, then it changes to positive, so that has to be a local minimum. And then the third possibility, I'll leave this. The third is that if f prime does not change, then f has no local max or min at c. And where you'll get that is, for example, if I have like the graph of x to the third. So at 0, there is no line parallel. It's, it's uh, basically a horizontal line there. So if I was to draw the, the tangent line, it's coming down, 
and then technically it changes to zero before heading down the other side of the curve. So that's a critical number. That's where it would be uh, zero undefined, zero. And so it's a critical number, but it doesn't give us a local max or min. It's just it's what's called a point of inflection. So it changes. Uh, the, the slope doesn't change, but we have a critical point there. So that's what number three is. You won't encounter that too much. So, it, so let's go back to our example. That's why I left this on the board. Our critical points for what? Negative one, zero, two. So if it's a critical number, if it changes from negative to positive, so it was a negative to positive, that means what? That means that negative 1 is a local max. And then it changed from positive, sorry, uh, negative 1 is a local min. So it was going down and then changed to positive. So negative 1 is a local minimum. Then it was heading uphill, and when it hit 0, it changed going down. So that means 0 is a local maximum. And then it's going down and it changes again to going back up. So 2 is also a local minimum. And that's going to happen as well. At our critical points, we can go from local max to min to max to min, unless, of course, it doesn't change at all at that critical point. And then it's just a point of inflection. So that wraps up <clears throat> excuse me, the first video uh, looking at the first derivative. If we're given some information, i.e., is the slope positive or is the slope negative? What does that tell us about the graph? So come on back. We'll look at uh, the second video, which is also looking at the second derivative of a function.